Hello everybody and welcome back to Movie Squirm. Today I'm going to be reviewing 2024 film Tarot. Or as this film says, it's correctly implied, Tarot. And this is directed by Spencer Cohen and Anna Holberg. And it stars Harriet Slater, Adrian Badley and Jacob Bettelon. When a group of friends staying over at a holiday home in the country end up finding a deck of tarot cards, they proceed to get their horoscopes read. But soon after, one by one, they are eventually killed in mysterious circumstances. I've got to be honest, guys, going into this, it wasn't near my most anticipated movies of the year list or anything like that. Going by the trailer, it seemed to be very generic and a movie that we seem to get once a month these days in the horror genre. But it is horror so I was always going to check it out. What I will say is the concept of this movie was quite interesting, I thought, using the themes of the tarot cards, or tarot cards, I'm going to say that a lot in this review, aren't I? I can tell. With how they work, the fate of people, what lies ahead, astrology, you know, that's the surface of the movie, really, basically using all that as the main theme, and it carries it throughout. It never forgets the roots of the movie and what is it all basing it around. And the movie works on faith a lot here. Now, these characters, by finding this cursed card deck at the start of the movie, have sort of changed their fate anyway, because this card deck brings nothing but death and trouble. And when they get their fates read at the start of the movie, their horoscope it basically tells what is going to happen to them and how it's going to happen. And it all starts to come true one by one. And this works in an almost Final Destination style way because all of these deaths are made to look like accidents. And you know what? That's a formula that kind of works for me. I love the Final Destination films. So if you're a fan of them as well, there might be something for you here, even though it has been done before. I really liked all the build-up and tension to these death scenes when each character is kind of killed off. One that really stood out was in a subway, and this character is in there alone, and this darkness just keeps coming towards him, and he's trying to run for cover everywhere he goes, and you know he's going to run into trouble early, really. But there's also one where a girl is in the house, she keeps hearing a noise, and she keeps going to check it out, and it just keeps getting... A little bit worse each time. No, I was always finding these scenes quite fun, really. But what made these kills more fun than anything is that each time a character is killed, a certain demon will appear just before their death. Now, they are given certain cards at the start of the movie. For instance, one character gets the Hell Priest, and just before she is killed, the Hell Priest appears on screen. So they're kind of lurking on over their shoulder there, ready to pounce once their death ensues. But one character got this jester type character. And even though I don't think this movie was very scary, I'll get to that in a minute, this scene creeped me out a little bit. He's kind of in an elevator, and every time the elevator door opens, this jester is there just laughing and stuff. And you know what? I'll give the movie credit for that one. You know, I thought that worked quite well, actually. Now, guys, just before I get into the negatives, I do want to say that this movie is certainly watchable enough. I had heard a lot of shit going into this film that this was worst of the year, and this was such a terrible movie and stuff. And I can see where them people are coming from. I have seen worse this year, but this movie is plagued with a lot of problems, it has to be said. Now, one of the biggest problems here is the dialogue. It felt like this 80-year-old woman had wrote a script thinking that she knows how teenagers talk, and it just didn't work for me. It felt like very forced conversation, and you just wouldn't have these lines of dialogue in actual real life, in my opinion. Now... <laughs> There's one moment where these characters are all saying what they think someone would do in like a sort of game and they're trying to pick out who would be that person. So someone goes, who's the first in this group who'd eat something off the floor if it dropped on the floor? Yeah, because that sounds really fun and wacky and out there, doesn't it? And they all point to this guy and he goes, hey, haven't you heard of the five second rule? And they're all just laughing their asses off and I'm like, Another time, this guy wins some money on a scratch card, and he goes, oh, wow, I don't even know the rules of this game. And they all start laughing ha, 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 in the car, and I'm just like, am I meant to laugh along with these people? <laughs> it was like that all the way through. And whilst I didn't hate any of these characters, really, they're just cardboard cutouts. I mean, I wouldn't say anyone was kind of grating on me too much. Apart from maybe Jacob Bettelon, who is the main actor in this movie, he's been in the Spider-Man movies and everything, and he was probably the most annoying character out of all of them, surprisingly, but 
there's just no personality to these characters. They're just there to figure out what they're going to do with this deck of cards, how they're all going to overcome it, and also there to be killed. There's no one you really get behind. There's no one you really care about. They are just there. And one of my most disappointing aspects of the film, even though I said I liked it in the positives, which I did, was the death scenes. Now, I did like the build-up and the tension and stuff, but a lot of these scenes just end with someone being killed, but you don't quite see it, and then it'll just cut to a bunch of characters in a car or something. Or, you know, you see little snippets of the death, and you just can tell this movie is going for the lower age rating to get more of the audience. And I think this film would have really benefited more if they just went with the gore, because at least it would have give another positive to the movie. But, you know, gore hounds, there's not much here for you, I've got to be honest. Another negative with this film is I just feel like I've seen it all before. Going by the trailer, I was right. You know, I could tell a million miles off by that trailer what this film is going to be like. And... It's a film that has been made constantly with a different skin on. It's just this skin is tarot cards and horoscopes. Basically, a bunch of characters find themselves in a situation. They go and investigate how they can overcome the situation, and then they try and overcome the situation. It's just a very formulaic story path. I feel like Disney do this a lot of the time, you know, feel like you're seeing the same Disney film all the time, but that seems to be creeping into the horror genre lately. Night Swim, you know, <laughs> other movies that have come out this year, like Imaginary and stuff. Yeah, I mean, we need some better ideas for horror, guys. I mean, it's all just very predictable, and you've got the same generic tropes that I'm seeing a lot lately with the, the lighting in this movie. Look, the first Omen, as much as people love that film, I do feel like that suffers from the same type of thing. This is, movie is just so dark. Like, Baghead, another, they're all coming out this year and the last few years where these movies are just so dark. And it's like, does it really have to be like that? Nearly every scene is in nighttime and then every scene in the house, everyone's got the light switched off, even though there's trouble lurking around every corner. They don't think to turn the lights on. And it just takes a lot of believability out. And why did the movies have to be this damn dark? Not all these directors can have the same vision, surely. Surely this is a studio interference because they all just look like the same cinematographer has worked on all these same movies. Even the jump scares here. Now, look, these jump scares, again, it's... it's it's kind of like the movie studios are interfering. Not all the directors can have the same type of jump scares that they want to do. Because they all just feel the same, and this movie is no different. In fact, this might be the worst type of jump scares I've seen this year. I mean, I didn't jump once in this movie. The only scene that really creeped me out was the jester, and that wasn't even working on jump scares at that moment. They just You just know when they're coming. I knew when every one of them was coming, and there is a screeching sound effect in every single one of them to try and enhance that jump. Just meh, meh, and it's like... Oh, come on, man. Please do something different. Like I said, guys, this is an okay movie. It's watchable. It's only 90 minutes. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It just feels like a film I've seen way too often now. I'm just going to go ahead and make this movie now. I'm going to give Taro a 4.5 out of 10. Can we please have something more creative in future, please? These are just coming out all the time. Okay, guys, at the end of these reviews, I always like to leave a little fun fact. Now, a fun fact for Taro is that the title card actually appears 17 minutes into the movie. Yeah, when I was watching this, I was like, oh, forgot that it didn't even show a title card, but there it is. Okay, guys, hope you all enjoyed this review. If horror is your sort of thing, please give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. It really helped me out. What did you think of Taro? Did you like it? <laughs> did you think it's one of the worst of the year? Please do let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much, guys. You take care. And I'll see you on the next video.